In this next set of videos, we're going to introduce a circuit analysis method known as mesh analysis. My name is Lee Brinton. I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. In these videos, we'll make the distinction between a loop and a mesh. We'll make distinctions between branch currents and mesh currents. We'll demonstrate the process of analyzing circuits using mesh analysis. We'll look at how dependent sources impact our analysis approach. And we'll also introduce the concept of supermeshes. We're going to find that a supermesh is analogous to the supernode that we ran into doing node analysis. First of all, the difference between a loop and a mesh. A loop is any closed path. In this circuit, we have a closed path here, a closed path there, and yet one more closed path. So this circuit has three different loops. Let us formally define a mesh now. A mesh is a closed path that contains no other closed paths within it. So in this case, we have a mesh here, a mesh here. But this outer loop, because it contains two loops within it, does not qualify as a mesh. Let's also make the distinction between branch currents and mesh currents. As we know, a, a branch current is the current flowing in any single branch of a circuit. This circuit has three different branches. There's this branch here, I sub A, this branch here that has the current defined I sub B, and this branch here that has the current I sub C. A mesh current is somewhat different. A mesh current is something of, an, of a, a contrived or a tool that we, that we uh, define to to assist in mesh analysis. And to understand it, think simply about or imagine that there was a current that flowed around this loop. That is a mesh current. Similarly, there's a current, or imagine that there was a current flowing around this loop. Those two mesh currents, are the, uh, we were, we're now going to see that those two mesh currents are all that we need they represent the minimum number of variables that we need to analyze this circuit. So what's the difference between I sub B, I1, and I2? Don't they both impact this branch? And in fact, they do. I sub B is defined as the current going down through R3. It's a branch current. In terms of our mesh currents, I sub B would equal our mesh current I1 flowing down in the same direction as I sub B minus the I2 mesh current that's flowing or opposing that. So I sub B then would equal I1 minus I2. On the other hand, I1 is this current flowing through here. And that current is, in fact, the branch current I sub A. So we can say, then, that I sub A is equal to I1. Or, I guess more, more appropriately, more, more intuitively, we'd say that I1 is simply the branch current I sub A. And similarly, over here, this mesh current I2 is the same as the branch current I sub C. So we could then say that I sub 2 is equal to I sub C. Thus, we can define any branch current in this circuit in terms of the mesh currents I1 and I2. Now, let's see how we would go about writing the equations to, to uh, solve this or to analyze this kind of circuit. In node analysis, we wrote KCL equations, one KCL for each node. In mesh analysis, we're going to write mesh equations, or KVL equations, summing the voltage drops around the closed loops, one for each mesh. So for example, let's start with this left-hand mesh and write a KVL equation starting right here. As we go across the voltage source, we're increasing V0 volts, and we're going to sum the voltage drops. Therefore, a voltage increase would be negative. And we have then negative V0. Continuing on around here, the voltage drop across that resistor in terms of I1 and I2, our mesh currents is going to be, and because we're going in the direction of I1, it'll be a plus 
R1 times I1. Continuing on down here, the voltage drop across R3 in terms of the mesh currents is going to be R3 times the current flowing in that direction, which is I1 minus I2. And the sum of those three terms must equal zero. Now look at the right-hand mesh. Starting right here, and let's go in the direction that I2 is referenced. We have then the voltage drop going plus to minus, going in the voltage or direction of current flow, we will have R3 times the current going up that branch, which is I2 minus I1. Continuing on around this loop, we have the voltage drop across R2 is going to be plus R2 times I2. And the sum of those two terms then must equal zero. We have two equations with two unknowns. We've got everything we need to solve. So the next step would then simply be to combine like terms. The first equation, let's factor or combine the I1 terms and factor I1 out. In doing so, we're left with an R1 plus an R3. Similarly for I2, there's only one I2 term. It's got a negative R3 times that, so negative R3 there. Bringing this negative E0 to the other side as a positive, we have then the left-hand side equaling V0. The second equation will similarly factor out I1, and when we do so, we've got a negative R3. Now working with I2, we have... Uh, what is that? R2 plus R3. And the sum of those terms has to equal zero. So, we have two equations, two unknowns. If we knew what R1, R2, and R3, and V0 were, we could plug in those values and would be able to solve for I1 and I2. Given those two values, we could then go back and calculate any branch voltage or branch current that we were interested in in this circuit.